How's it going guys? Michael Shamlin here with a Lightroom CC tutorial. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to use the new panorama stitch function in Lightroom CC. But I'm also going to compare it a little bit with the previous panorama stitch function in Adobe Photoshop. So I have three examples here. The first example is taken in Singapore and it's just two photos two photos um, that make up kind of a wide angle frame. And what I'm going to do here is select both photos. These are both raw. And as you can see, I haven't corrected the horizon at all. This one's a little bit more straight and then this one's um, off angle. But I'm just going to take both of them, select them both, right click, photo merge, and then panorama. And let's see what happens. And the cool thing about this new function is it gives you a preview and it's really quick. And as you can see here, just from the preview, it already tried to correct that distortion and it tried to correct a lot of the vertical distortion as well, which is awesome. It saves us a lot of time. You can also use the auto crop function and it'll auto crop it for you. And the cool thing is even if you have auto crop selected and you click merge, you can always go back on that crop. It, it will give you the full size image and put it back into your Lightroom catalog. So it saves you a lot of steps. Um, now, as far as the difference between cylindrical and spherical, the only thing I can really tell is that it changes the aspect ratio just a little bit. Even for this image, it doesn't look like it do does anything. I will select either of these. Uh, perspective, I haven't played around with perspective too much, but it looks like it tries to correct a lot of that distortion by adding a more wide angle feel than a fisheye feel, but I think this looks more natural. So with this function, it takes a little while, so I'm going to speed through. Um, I'm going to speed through this and just click merge. And as you can see up here, it says creating panorama. Looks like our panorama is done, and it's created it right here, and it looks awesome. And as you can see here, it's given us our full view, and we can go in and crop it ourselves um, and you can do anything that you'd normally do in in Lightroom and you know this is a panorama well I mean it's not really a, it's essentially a panorama but it's only two photos and you know it's got people moving around there's motion with the water it, it did a fantastic job now let's compare that with how Photoshop handled this file because I actually before recording this video brought the, these same two files into the Photoshop stitch so <laughs> this is the first attempt, and this is with geometric distortion um, button turned off. And as you can see here, it, well, it, it didn't really work. <laughs> but um, let's see how the other function did with geometric distortion turned on. So a little better. It didn't do a bad job, but what I love about the Lightroom feature is it tried to correct that distortion for us. So we don't need to go in and fix all the vertical lines. We don't need to fix the horizon on the Lightroom version, but we would in the Photoshop version. And not to mention the Photoshop version also takes a lot longer to process in my opinion. So let's go back to Lightroom here and try some new, some other types of panoramas. Let's try this one. This is a pretty large panorama. Definitely a few frames. And this was taken in Shanghai. Let's go ahead and same thing as before, just select all the photos, right click, and photo merge. Do panorama, it'll give us our nice preview. Awesome, so looks like it did a great job. Right off the bat from the, I just love the preview, it's so awesome to be able to see what's gonna happen in the photo before you actually, um, you know, let the program do its thing, but let's do auto crop. And yeah, it looks great to me. I can't see anything wrong with this panorama. Let's select Merge. Awesome, so our panorama is done. Let's take a look. And here it is. Looks like there's that little edge right there. We can go in and clone that. Besides that, I mean, looks awesome. Let's try one more thing. So for 
panoramas, you want as many frames as possible. You want to basically not have, or you want to have as much overlap as possible, I should say. Uh, you don't want to take images that are too far off angle or else the program just won't know what to do with them. Well, let's try something interesting here. Let's try selecting every other photo instead of all these photos and see what the program will do. Let's select this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, and see what happens in photo merge. Wow. So even with less frames, it looks like it did a pretty good job at knowing what to do with this photo. Okay, so here's our new panorama right here. And let's go in and see what it did. So there's one little mark that would need to be fixed. Here's another one right here. So you'd need to go in and clone that one right here. So not quite as good as with more frames, but still the fact that it was able to stitch this panorama out of frames that are barely overlapping is pretty impressive to me. So this is our third example, and it's probably my most requested uh, example for even a tutorial is how to do the astro panoramas. Let's see what the photo merge will do with these frames. As you can see, the tree is kind of in the middle here with the Milky Way. We want it to arc up, and normally um, Photoshop <laughs> Photoshop has trouble with astro panoramas a lot of the time. I have to do it completely manually. I'll go in, bring all the photos into Photoshop, and stitch them all manually and make them perfect. Let's see what happens here. If I select all of them, right click, photo merge, panorama. Okay, so here's our preview. Looks pretty good right off the bat. We can see there's some blurring of the stars up top where it's trying to stretch out the image a little bit too much. We can either choose to fix the distortion there and uh, bring get these stars to be less blurry or just crop them out. Normally I would just crop them out. I always leave a little bit of extra room. I think the panorama is more, uh, let's try auto cropping this. The panorama is more from here down. I don't really need this space up top the Milky Way. Let's go ahead and just merge this. And our panorama is complete. Let's see what it looks like. That's pretty awesome. Wow, okay. So what I would probably do here is go down and change the aspect ratio a little bit more like that. See what these top stars look like. So I'd probably crop it around probably here and say but that is it did a pretty awesome job there would be a little bit of distortion correction I would go in and do like it kind of looks like the trees leaning a little bit to the right kind of looks like this tree is leaning a little bit to the left but nothing um, nothing major so just for your enjoyment let's see what Photoshop decided to do with the panorama because I already stitched it and here you go <laughs> so yeah, it would be quite fun trying to correct this crazy distortion using the warp tool. I don't know about you, but I would take this version 10 times over that version. But, um, anyways, yeah, I, I'm quite impressed with the, with the Lightroom Pano Stitch tool. I've been getting asked a lot to uh, go in and kind of review it, go in and do a quick little tutorial. So I hope you guys learned something from this. Um, yeah, just... Leave any potential tutorials you'd like to see in the future in the comments, and I'll uh, see if something I, I might be able to help out with. Uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Subscribe to see more.